Okay, so do you guys see in the assignment for the test review? The, there is a test review, <clears throat> all of the answers worked out, and all of this stuff worked out. So you guys have all of that to look at tonight. Practice whatever you want to. Come into class tomorrow with questions, and we'll get ready for our test. But this is a really good explanation, I think, to what angle of elevation and depression are, how they're formed, what it looks like. Angle of elevation is always going to be this bottom corner, however you draw your triangle, whether it's to the right or to the left, it's always going to be this bottom corner. The angle of elevation is formed between the ground and something, <clears throat> all right? It's always going to be in that bottom corner. The angle of depression, we want you guys to see, is formed outside of the triangle. It's outside of the triangle. So you can look at this two different ways. You can say right here, the angle of elevation is the same as the angle of depression. I'll show you what I mean by that. I showed you that yesterday. Or you can look at it in this way. So look, here's the question. Just whatever. They told you that the angle of depression from the top of a lighthouse was 35 degrees. So you guys can look at this two ways. Every single time they give you an angle of depression from the top, you can always just write that the angle of depression at the top is the same as the angle of elevation at the bottom. You can always put it in the bottom left-hand corner or right-hand corner, however you draw your triangle. If they give you the angle of depression, you are more than welcome to write it as the angle of elevation. Just understand it's not in the same spot. If you don't want to do that, and I'll show you one example, because <clears throat> somebody asked me, why would you do it any other way? Just some people like to do things a little differently, which is fine. If you want to use this angle up here, then the way you figure that out is you say 90 minus the angle of depression, so you get 55 inside here. That's where that came from. But the easiest thing to do is when they tell you the angle of depression is, just use it as the angle of elevation. Put it in the corner with the bottom. Now, I'm going to use the, ter the variables x and y when we're solving these. y is going to be the height, the up and down. And X is going to be your left to right. But you guys are going to start to notice patterns of <clears throat> where to put certain measurements based upon what the wording is. The hardest part of this right triangle stuff is knowing where to put the information that they give you. I drew pictures. Last period, we drew pictures with everything. And some of the pictures were ridiculous, but it really is helpful to draw the picture to see what's going on. Once you guys have the information, then it's super easy to do in the calculator. So every time we do some of these problems, I want you guys to say, okay, I'm talking about right triangle trig, so I'm going to draw a what? A right triangle. I always draw it the same way every time. <clears throat> it says a tower casts a shadow that's 60 feet long. Guys, think about it. You're outside, you're walking down the sidewalk, and you see your shadow. Where do you see your shadow? It's on the bottom. It's on the ground, right? Anytime they tell you that a shadow is such and such long, they're telling you what? The X value or the Y value? The X, the bottom. So they're telling you right here that your shadow is 60 feet long. Use the feet. It says the angle of elevation of the sun. Where does the angle of elevation always go? The bottom corner. The angle of elevation is formed with the ground. How tall is the tower? Draw yourself a picture. Do you guys agree with me that this is where the tower would be? This is a tower. So if they're asking for how tall the tower is, what are they asking for? The, well, just, just with my picture, what are they asking for? The height. They want to know the height. I'm going to call it Y because I want you guys to get used to up and down is the Y. The bottom, left to right, is the X. So in regards to this angle, what is Y? It's the opposite side. And then what is 60? It's the adjacent. So what trig function, guys, uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So this is just tangent 65 equals opposite over adjacent. And we did this yesterday. This part is easy. <clears throat> How do you solve this? You cross multiply, right? So 1y equals 60 times the tangent of 65. And then throw it in your calculator. Mm -hmm. But the easy part is the calculator behind it. The hard part is figuring out where stuff goes. So again, I worked all of these out. I have it posted. It's in the test review itself. So you guys can work these and check your work. But I want, I want to focus on how to draw the triangle. 
This is where I want to really focus on numbers two and three. If you notice two and three, it's the same setup, the same question, but it's asking two different things. So I always, always, always draw the triangle. I know I'm using right triangle tricks. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. And then I'm going to look at the information that they give. And I'm going to draw a picture. Wow, that is a horrible triangle. Okay, I'm going to draw the picture. It says Matt is standing on the top of a cliff 350 feet above the lake. Okay, so here, I'm going to draw a little picture. Here's the lake. Do you see the pretty lake? So where is this person? He's on the top. He's standing up here on a cliff. Okay. Hi, Matt. Everybody say hi, Matt. Where <clears throat> do I put the 305? The height. How tall is the cliff? They told us it's 305 feet. All right. Everybody see that? Now it says the measure of the angle of depression to a boat on the lake. Well, oh, here's the lake. Let me draw a boat. My art skills are amazing, guys. The angle of depression. So what they told us is the angle of depression out here is 42. Where else can I put 42 to make my problem a little easier? I can put it down here as elevation. You want to do that every single time, perfect. If you don't want to, if you want to use this angle up here, you say 90 minus 42. What is that, 48? So this angle inside here is 48. If you want to use that, fine. I'm just always going to say, okay, I'm going to put my angle of elevation. It's just easier to do the same thing all the time. How far is the boat from the base of the cliff? Okay, so here's the cliff that Matt's standing on. What are they asking for? What piece of information? The X. The X. They're asking how far. Look, draw it. Think about what they're saying. How far is the boat from the bottom of the cliff? Do you guys see what piece they're asking for? They're asking for the X. So in regards to 42, what is 305? Opposite, good. And what is X? The adjacent. What trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent again. So tangent of 42 equals opposite over adjacent. How do you solve this? Cross multiply. But drawing a picture, as silly as it seems, really, really can help you guys make sure that you understand what they're giving you and where to put stuff. Here is the exact same question. I still have Matt still standing on a cliff. The cliff is here. Here's my lake and my boat. Ooh, we changed boats. <clears throat> How high is the cliff that Matt's standing on? It's still 305 feet. The angle of depression, which is the same as the angle of the depression up here, is the same as elevation down here, is still 42. But now the question says, what? How far is Matt from what? The boat. So now what are they asking for? The hypotenuse. They're asking, for, I'll, we'll call it C, the, the hypotenuse. Do you guys see how that same question, same setup, but they're asking a different question. They're not saying how far is the boat from the bottom of the cliff. They're saying how far is the boat from the guy. Does that make sense? Yes or no? All right, so in regards to 42, what is 305? Opposite, good. And what is that? The hypotenuse. So what trig function, guys, uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So we're going to say sine of 42 equals opposite 305 over the hypotenuse, which is C. <laughs> now I'm going to show you one thing <clears throat> why this works. I'm going to show you one time, and then that's it, okay? They told us that the angle of depression is 42, correct? So this is 42. Well, then that means this inside angle here has to be 48, right? Does that equal 90 if I add it together? Yes. So say you wanted to do that. You wanted to say 90 minus the angle of depression and use that. Well, in regards to 48, what pieces of information do you have? What's 305? The adjacent and the what? Hypotenuse. So what trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So cosine 48 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. You will get the exact same answer. <clears throat> okay.
because you're using different angle measurements with the exact same measurements that the problem gives you. So if you do want to use the angle of depression and you want to figure out what the inside angle is, that's fine. You can do 90 minus, but you don't have to. You can always, always, always say the angle of depression at the top is the same as the inside angle of elevation at the bottom. You can do that every time, but you'll get the same answer. All right, so here we go. I told you guys a bunch of times, when you see a ladder leaning, what piece are they talking about? The hypotenuse. But again, draw the picture so you can see it. It says a ladder that's 20 feet long is leaning against the side of a building. So look, here's my ladder. It's leaning against the side of a building. How long is the ladder? 20 feet. So I got a big 20 right here. <laughs> the angle form between the ladder and the ground. Do you guys agree that the ground is right here? Right? There's my grass. So look at it. The angle between the grass and the ladder. Can you clearly see where those two things meet? Yes. Where do they meet? At what angle of elevation? 75 degrees. How far is the bottom of the ladder to the base of the building? So think about this. Where is the bottom of the ladder? Right? Good. The bottom of the ladder is here. Where's the base of the building? Here. So what are they looking for? The X value. I know it seems silly to draw a picture like this, but if you do, you actually can see exactly where to put things. And then you can figure out what you have and what you need. So in regards to 75, what is X and what is 20? This is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. So what trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So cosine 75 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. How do you solve it? You cross multiply, throw it in your calculator. <clears throat> Again, all of these are worked out, pictures drawn, all that stuff in the test review assignment. It's there for you to look at. I just want you guys to see all this. Look at eight. John wants to measure the height of a tree. Okay, draw your triangle. We're talking about a tree. Here's my tree. All right, you guys agree that's a tree? The tree grows up in the air, right? He wants to measure the height of the tree. How tall is the tree? So what are we looking for? The Y. We're looking for how tall this tree is. So John walks exactly 100 feet from the base of the tree. He walks away, and he does what? He looks up. So here's John. He's walking, he's walking, he's walking, he's walking. He goes 100 feet. So where do I put 100, guys? At the bottom, good, this is 100 feet he walked. The angle from the ground to the top of the tree, where does that go? The angle of elevation right there. How tall is the tree? In regards to 33, what do we have? Opposite and adjacent, what trig function uses opposite and adjacent? So tangent 33 equals y over 100. <clears throat> Draw the guy. Draw where he walked to. Draw the tree. Draw the building. Yeah, because you'll have an angle as the, num the other number that you need. Yep. All right, the flagpole in front of. All right, draw your triangle. Think about a flagpole, guys. Does a flagpole lay on the ground? No. Does a flagpole lean against something? No, your flagpole's right here. See the big flagpole? Okay. A flagpole casts a shadow 40 feet long. Where are shadows? Yeah, it's on the ground. It's the X value. 40 feet long is your shadow. The sun has <coughs> cast the shadow, whatever, at an angle of elevation of 31. Where does that go? At the bottom. Angle of elevation is always in that bottom corner. How tall is the flagpole? What are we looking for? The Y, the height, good. So in regards to 31, what is Y and what is 40? Opposite and adjacent. What's that trig function that uses opposite and adjacent? So tangent 31 equals Y over 40. Cross multiply, get your answer. <clears throat> if you guys visualize things, these are not as hard as they appear. If you try to just look at it and not draw a picture, and just throw stuff in a calculator, you're not going to get the answer right. But two or three of these questions on your test are going to be word problems. You're going to have to do this on your own. 
You cannot ask me, do I put the 65 here or here? That's what you guys need to answer. So make sure you guys are on top of that. All right, Kelly. Here's Kelly and her kite. Think about a kite, guys. Mm -hmm. Number two. Okay. Okay, so you're going to cross multiply. So 305 equals x times the tangent of 42. And then you're going to divide both sides by tan 42. Because that's an actual number. It's just a gross number. It's a decimal, so you're just going to divide by it. <clears throat> All right, let's go back down here to Kelly and her kite. All right, Kelly is flying a kite to which the angle of elevation is 70. What is that? Where is that? The bottom. Angle of elevation is always here at the bottom corner. The string on the kite measures 65 meters long. We talked about this yesterday. How many of you have flown a kite before and you stand and you stand and you stand like this and the kite string just goes straight above your head? Does that happen? No. The wind takes it, right? And it's going away at an angle. If you have a kite string, a ramp, an escalator, a ladder leaning, what are they talking about? The hypotenuse. 65 goes right here. How far is the kite above the ground? Are they saying how far is the kite from here to there? Or are they saying from the ground up? How high is the kite? Ground up. So what are they you looking for? The x value, the y value? The y. You're looking for the height. So in regards to 70, what do you have? You have opposite and hypotenuse. So it's sine 70 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cross multiply and solve. <clears throat> Here's with me. Okay. Look at number 12. Again, we're talking about right triangles, so I'm going to draw one. It says from a 200-foot observation tower on the beach. Okay, so we're on the beach here. Here's the beach. A tower of some sort, an observation tower. A man sights, yeah, a man sights a whale in difficulty. Okay, that's bizarre, but whatever. Where is the man if he's at the, on a 200-foot observation tower? Is he staying on the beach or is he at the top? He's at the top, right? We got our man over here, right? And he sees this poor whale. <laughs> um, there's my whale. He's shooting water out. He's in difficulty. That guy looks like he's having difficulties, right? It says he sights a whale having difficulty. The angle of depression... So the whale is seven degrees. <clears throat> well, the angle of depression at the top, we know is what? It's also the angle of elevation from the bottom. So seven goes there. How far is the whale from the shoreline? How far is the whale from the shoreline? What are they asking for? The X value. In regards to seven, what do you know? You know the opposite side and... Adjacent, so it's tangent of 7 equals opposite over adjacent. Cross, multiply, and solve. How could this question use the exact same information and change? What about if I said, how far is the man from what? The whale. What would we be asking for in that case? The hypotenuse. So you've got to read the question Draw a silly little picture so you can actually say, how far is here to there? And then you guys can figure that out that way. <clears throat> All right. I put some more, more difficult ones in to give you guys just a little practice to look at. Again, I have the answers posted, so you are welcome to look at the answers. Come in tomorrow with questions. The test review is posted. The answers are posted. All of this worked out is posted, so you guys look at it tonight. Do what you want. If you want to do it all, great. If you don't want to do any of it, fine. But your test is on Thursday. You guys are going to get your quizzes back tomorrow. I'll go over any questions you have on the review, any questions you have on your quiz, anything, and then you'll take your test on Thursday. Sound good? Okay.